good morning church um and it's isn't it great to share testimonies i just love when the, the church share and we the body of christ is functioning amen jesus is the one who builds his church and the gates of hell will not prevail hallelujah uh god is good amen god is very good to us um I'm going to share with you something very, very important. Nehemiah, the story of Nehemiah is one of those classic stories that is, uh, you know, like David and Goliath stories that actually we quite often return to because there's so much meat in it. And, and if you noticed, even in this very story, uh, Kevin, uh, after this morning reading, he pointed out there's at least three uh, he noticed straight away from the first glance three very current events this building of the wall there's fake news there's uh there's fear intimidation yeah and and it, it's all it's all right there and and we've got uh, all of these things uh, as well in, in today's world coming um i just want to share with you guys um family some the one of the most important battles you will fight in your life um, obviously the word of god tells us fight the good fight of faith and you know the absolute opposite of faith is fear uh, bible tells us very clear that faith comes by hearing hearing the word of christ in exactly same way you as you read through the bible you see for example jeremiah says and everyone who will hear, their knees will tremble and they will lose their strength. You know, everyone who hears this will be afraid. Uh, the fear comes by hearing. And this is why Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 4 says to us very clear. He says, be careful what you hear. Because the measure of thought and study you give to the truth will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that will come back to you. But if you hear to the fear, and if you hear to other side, uh, you, you will obviously have the opposite of effect. Uh, Jesus says to Jairus, when uh, uh, he was on his way with Jesus to heal, to heal or raise, to heal his daughter uh, who was near death, uh, and as soon as news came that she is dead and don't bother teach anymore, do you remember what the first thing Jesus said to him? It says, Jesus overhearing what they said, but ignoring, as in Amplified, it says, but ignoring what they said, said to Jairus, fear not, only believe, right? Only believe. Uh, why did Jesus specify it so, so you must fear not, only believe? Because fear will ne negate your faith. Uh, one of my beloved preachers said, fear tolerated is faith contaminated fear tolerated is faith contaminated so in this story of nehemiah it's actually we'll we'll look through and it's I'm so current it's just like as if it was written today it's amazing uh, god's book is just so 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 relevant for us today i want to start with uh, lighthearted as you always is not as you know i always like to start with a few jokes so a teacher asks her students about the thing they fear the most one girl said she was afraid of spiders another student said he was afraid of heights uh, and the boy said i'm afraid of evil amen evil a men the teacher confused asked who are they who are this evil a men uh, the student said i don't know but Every time when I finish my prayer, I ask God to deliver us from evil. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Um, I've always had an irrational fear of speed bumps, but I'm slowly getting over it. What, and the last one, what day does the egg fear the most? Friday. Okay, enough, right? Chick, <laughs> Chick is closing his face. <laughs> okay, great. So let's go to the story of Nehemiah. Um, 
in uh, I actually would love to start from chapter four uh, and and I'll uh, I'll just uh, show you a few bits and then uh, we, this the whole sort of fight scene as as so to speak uh, is unfolded in chapter four and chapter six so those chapters are almost like the main strategy that devil uses you know and devil doesn't change <laughs> he he is an old enemy and he uses exactly the same strategy and apostle paul said to us in in second corinthians uh, you know we 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 aware of devil's schemes we are not ignorant of his schemes and his schemes are always exactly the same and and the word of god reveals to us uh, what, what his schemes are and it's always you know when satan came to deceive adam and eve or to tempt adam and to cause them to sin he didn't come as a scary lion or dinosaur threaten to crush them if they didn't eat from the tree of knowledge he, he his best weapon he put on the line his best weapon and it says very clear there uh, serpent was the shrewdest yeah serpent was the wisest uh, so that was his his great weapon is he is the shrewdest he knows how to trick uh, he tricked them into into not actually trusting uh, the goodness of god and not trusting that god had their best intention and uh, guys exactly same exactly same happens today this is his strategy didn't change he comes with almost fake news uh, and he's trying to just discredit god to you and discredit god's goodness and say to you you know for example you might you might have fear of uh luck that you won't be you won't have enough the key there is actually you are not trusting that god will provide yeah if you fear sickness if you fear disease the actual core there fear is you actually don't trust that father god will heal you right if you if you fear if you fear of danger the real real core there is you don't trust that he will protect you and all of he promised already healing right he actually said it, it's so it's it's as good as done it actually says by his stripes we were healed amen he promises in psalm 91 that no evil shall befall you no weapon will uh, in isaiah no weapon formed against you will prosper there's so many promises and when we don't trust it's like jesus says it shall be done to you according to your faith what what do you actually believe fear is actually believing that what enemy says to you you believe in that side rather than it's 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 the lack of trust and and lack of belief or it and the core there it's lack of believing that daddy loves you enough that daddy in heaven really is that good okay so look at chapter four um it, it starts in chapter four uh, when sanballat sanballat was very angry uh, he said what are those feeble jews doing will they restore their wall uh, in 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 my nlt bible in new living translation says what, what does this bunch of poor feeble jews think they're doing do they think they can build a wall in a day if they offer enough sacrifices look at those charred stones they're pulling out of the rubbish and using again and tobiah the ammonite who was standing beside him remarked that stone wall would collapse even if a fox walked along uh, along the top of it then i prayed oh hear our god for we are being mocked may their scoffing fall back on their heads their mockery the first strategy of the enemy is actually um, is to focus you on you <laughs> he it's it's it, mockery and scoffing it's he wants you to make self he wants to make you self-conscious 
uh, the, and to tell you what you're doing is absolutely non-important. Why do you go to that prayer meeting? Does it make any difference? What, what are you doing? Uh, who are you praying to? You know, you can't even see. You, you, do you know your, uh, your prayer gone higher than the ceiling? You know, these thoughts enemy can have put in your head. Uh, and actually, you know, listen, enemy always speaks from the first person singular. Uh, Kevin is good. You can uh, return. Uh, so enemy focuses on, he speaks from the inside. It's like you think it's your own thoughts. Why am I doing this? How, uh, th does my prayer actually even get, oh, there's so much to pray for. Um, and oh, people might say, well, why are you going to those prayers? What does it make any difference? You know, the, the scoffing, the mockery, uh, that's where, uh, does it even work? And what you pray, has it make any, does, did it make any difference? You know, or you witness to so many people, did any of them become believers? Uh, you know, he, uh, he, almost wants you to forget those who did <laughs> uh, like how many did become believers you know um, or whatever you're doing does it does it actually matter does anyone cares you know uh, and and that's enemy's first strategy to make you self-conscious and look at yourself and listen this is where fear lies because fear only can grab you when you're self-conscious uh, this is why Jesus said those who try to save their life will actually lose it. Yeah, because if you're self-conscious, you actually start working against yourself. Um, now, further, if, if we look further, um, he just basically he prayed and carried on work uh, through this intimidation. In, in verse 10, people of chapter 4, people of the Judah began to complain that the workers were becoming tired. There was so much rubble to be moved that we, there's so much rubble to be moved that we could not ever get it done by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know, we, we will have come swoop down on them and kill them. So it's like uh, you, you almost feel when you come, for example, to prayer or when you pray, oh, wow, there's so much to pray for. There's so many things in the world going wrong. What do I pray for? There's so much rubble, so much rubble, so much charred stones, and we can't ever do this by ourselves. But you're not by yourself. God is for you. Amen. And your praise, his delight. And you come to the throne of grace. And when you pray, heaven moves. When you pray, you partner with the God who created the heaven and the earth. Listen, every one of your prayer paves the way every one of your prayer is achieving great results and some 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 things are changed just like that when i was a young christian i remember i was at my nuns and i was the first christian in my uh, whole family uh, no one in my in my family or my extended family was christian at that time and i was praying every single day and i remember uh, i was just picking plums that day or, or uh, raspberries, I don't remember, on a uh, field. And I was praying that rain would stop because rain started. And as I prayed, rain just instantly stopped, which doesn't happen in Ukraine. <laughs> it's, uh, there was few things I prayed and then instantly was answered to do like with, uh, you know, the weather or there was something, um, nothing to do with kind of people, you know. And, and then I said, wow, Father, uh, my prayers answered so fast. Why I'm praying for my family to become Christians and they're not turning just like that. And, and I just felt God said to me right here, because I never force anyone. I work with human will and it takes time. I start, I start working with them, but I never force anyone. So I need to reveal things to them. With the weather, I have no resistance. <laughs> with, with, when you pray for the animals, I have no resistance. I can move right away. But with the people, he cooperates with our will. Amen. He never forces anything. So he needs to reveal his goodness, his love, and then slowly make people themselves decide to change and follow God. And then he can enter in. So in exactly the same, you know, when you pray, heaven moves, guys, every time. Amen.
Um, further on, look at this, verse 12. Um, it says, the Jews who lived near the enemy came, meanwhile, the people in Judah, uh, so before, then the Jews who lived near them, that it says here, came and told us 10 times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Um, it's like the, the Jews who lived near the enemy had told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. One of the pastors that I uh, follow, he said, if your input today from, if, you're, if you have much more input from the main media and from social media than from the word of God, your discouragement, your fear, your anxiety is self-inflicted. <laughs> so if you live near enemy, you constantly have their, you know, background noise uh, of the death streaming from the TV 24-7, death news, fake news, streaming, propaganda streaming from there uh, all the time. If you have it always on the background, you know, your discouragement is self-inflicted. If you have less input from the word of God than from there. Guys, if you live near the enemy, move. Move. Close that TV or news and listen to the word of God. This is, this is a really uh, important season in your life. You've got to, as, as he says to us, don't be afraid of them. He said in verse 14. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, great and glorious, and fight for your brothers, for your sons and daughters, your wives and your homes. Uh, remember the Lord your God. Yeah, you. This is fight. Uh, you you are in this fight. You put your. You know. You. It's like who do you gonna take bullet for? You you can. When you fight against fear, you're not just fighting for yourself. You're fighting for your families. Uh, because through fear, devil wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy. This is his first strategy to intimidate you and then to make you surrender to fear. And then uh, exactly the same way how God moves by grace. It, we are saved by grace, by God's grace, through faith. Devil wants to move in your life through fear and intimidation, okay? His evilness instead of God's grace and through your fear and, and your anxiety and worry. So don't be afraid. Remember the Lord your God. Amen. And, and in this season, resist all fear. So in, in, in chapter 6, you see also they carry on. They, they basically come and say, we will, uh, w w they, come, let's meet. Four, they said four times, come, let's meet. They distract him. And he said, this is awesome. His reply, I'm doing a great work. I cannot stop to come to meet with you. So like, what I'm doing is awesome. <laughs> Amen. What I'm doing is, is eternal. Uh, I'm, I can't be distracted to, to your requests or your uh, propositions you know when if whatever you're doing that god is laying on your heart you are doing awesome work and obviously you, need, you know satan tries four times why because he wants to stop your confession of faith he wants you he wants to weaken your resolve you know if god asks you twice like he asked elijah uh, elijah why are you here elijah gave him twice exactly same reply uh it's you know, when God gave him a chance to retake the test, he took, he gave him exactly the same answer. That was not smart. But when the enemy says four times, exactly the same, come and meet, you know, you got to give exactly the same answer. And don't weaken in your resolve, you know. And, and he wants, the, the word of God tells us, even when you're weak, when you, the, let the weak say, what? I am weak. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Amen. Let the poor say, I'm rich because of the Lord. Amen. So he wants to weaken your confession of faith. But when, whatever you just confess, I, 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 my strength comes from the Lord. Amen. He, he is my refuge and strength. 
Hallelujah. He is my high tower. He is my provider. Amen. So he wants to weaken your resolve. So the fifth time, he actually sent an open letter, which means he posted, posted it all over Facebook and all over Twitter. Uh, fake news. Look, we hear that you actually are planning to make yourself a king. Obviously, the king of Persia will hear and take your head off. And his reply was, you're just making it out of your head. <laughs> I, I, I love this reply. It's uh, it, it was probably written here. He's so gentle, you know. We probably would say something else. You're just making some. Uh, oh, so, but look at this. He says in verse eight, my reply was, you know your line. There is no truth in anything you say. They were trying to intimidate me so that I would break resolve and stop the work look where intimidation leads to intimidation leads to to break your resolve but the whole purpose is stop the work stop the work of god in you or through you intimidation will stop the work of god you see first time uh, second time when shemaiah the prophet called him and he said hey he prophesied said, come, they're going to kill you, hide in the temple. And Nehemiah obviously is not from the priests, so for him to go into the temple would be sin. And he said, he was trying to intimidate me, to cause me to sin, so that they would have something to accuse me with. So intimidation, in the first instance, see, intimidation leads to stopping the work. And in this instance, intimidation leads to sin. And do you remember in Psalm 37, it says, fret not, it leads only to evil doing. Fret not, it leads only to evil doing. Why don't you why do you think the commandment that is repeating repeated in the Bible more than any other commandment? What is that? Which commandment? Fear not. Fear not. This is why our God is so trustworthy. Our God is so so good. Our God is love. Amen. He's not just loving. He is love. And his perfect love, Bible says, his perfect love turns fear out of door. And this is why he says, fear not. Because when you know his character, and this is how uh, Nehemiah could actually stand. Uh, we can actually go. How, how Nehemiah could fight this? He knew God's character. He knew that God is good. He knew that God called him. He knew God's purposes. He knew God's promises. Yeah. Uh, and thank you so much, Kevin. Yeah. He knew God's character. He knew God's promises. Nehemiah trusted God and not himself. Amen. And Nehemiah was secure in the Lord's loving kindness. Chapter one, verse five. So th this is, this is exactly what the father wants you to focus on. Remember the Lord. When you uh, do you remember Psalm 23 says he prepared the table before you were in the presence of your enemies. But he doesn't want you to focus on the enemies. He wants you to focus on him. Why? Because he's taking care of you. Amen. He will make sure the enemy cannot touch you. When you dwell in the shelter of the most high, you are remaining stable and fixed under the shadow of the almighty. And then what? Surely he will deliver you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. It says, surely he will deliver you. Amen. Uh, he gives his angels charge over you. So in that fight, you focus on your eyes on him. He prepares a table before you. He wants you to focus on his provision, focus on his goodness. Just... Like he says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just keep eating the Lord. Amen. Keep chewing on him. Keep sucking on him. He is so good. Keep meditating on his love. Keep meditating on his promises. Amen. And it will build faith. It will stir up this love. You will see that we love him because he first loved us. You will see how much you are loved. And it will... Cast the fear out of the door. His perfect love, John 
first john 4 18 his perfect love turns fear out of the door amen so this is how nehemiah uh, was fighting so know the lord's word uh, the enemies uh, uh, just reminded me of a story actually you know when when you when you focus on the lord i was um, when i was a uh, still a young boy uh, i've got a, a cousin who lives in moscow and uh, he was moscow champion in in boxing and he was uh, basically once i asked him how many push-ups he does i wanted to compare and he says i don't know i'm like how you can know you, you know your maximum number he said I don't count how many I do. I just count how many hours I do. I'm like, what? Uh, so how many hours you can do push-ups? He's like, about four. I said, what? You're amazing. He said, no, I'm not. I've got friends who can do eight hours. <laughs> I'm like, what? Um, but he he was uh, he was basically as well champion in uh, in uh, karate, and he was after that he was champion in the uh, uh, Russian special forces. Uh, once he was coming from Japan, uh, he was smuggling illegally. He was smuggling cars from there. And uh, some uh, Chinese uh, border patrol uh, found him. There was a, a whole, whole troop of those. Uh, I don't remember how many, but there was lots of soldiers. And he put them all down. So when, whenever I was with him, uh, especially when I was a young boy, we had lots of trouble time in my country. Uh, the lo lots of mafia and racket and all that stuff. Uh, whenever I was with him, I can tell you, I never ever was afraid. I never was afraid of anyone or anything. Uh, and uh, it just often reminds me, it's like, you know, like David said, I, every, I always said the Lord before me, I will not be moved. Amen. And this is what the Lord is everywhere. Amen. He is everywhere. So it's not like we can set the Lord before us. But if the Lord is everywhere, then I can. I might just as well imagine that he's right with me. And actually, he promised he would never leave me or forsake me. Amen. So if you just constantly every day set in your mind, Jesus is here. Use your godly imagination. God Almighty is with me. Great and glorious God who made heavens and earth, divided the Red Sea, drowned the whole army of Pharaoh in one stroke. Amen. Just imagine that same God who conquered the grave is with me. That same God who spoke sun and stars into existence, he is with me. That same God who slain Goliath, amen, is with me. Hallelujah. When you think or not, just meditate, imagine it, and then think that you are so loved by him. So let, let me just finish uh, in, uh, hallelujah. Uh, let me just, how, how you can be secure in, in, in this, how you can fight and turn the fear out of door. Uh, I just want to read you, obviously this is, we see how Nehemiah did it. And how Nehemiah succeeded. And this is, you are child, child of God. This is all available to you. And even more so. If Nehemiah could do it under Old Testament, how much more you can do it in the New Testament. Amen. When greater is he who is in you. Greater. Every time you hear bad news, I want you to say it out loud. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Every time you hear maybe some of your you know, loved ones or whoever, or neighbors or some people acquainted got a virus, you just say, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Keep your confession of faith. Keep your trust in the Father. He is the most trustworthy. I think this is, we owe him a trust. And, and without, it's without faith that is impossible to please God. You know, it doesn't say without prayer, without fasting, without Bible reading, those things are essential, right? And yet, without faith, it's without trust. Trust. He so delights in your trust. When you trust his word, when you just simply take him at, at his word. Amen. So Jesus, uh, Jesus knew. He, he listened to the Father and he meditated on that revelation when the Father said to him, this is my beloved son. He was confident in, in the love of the Father. And when 
people wanted to throw him off the cliff. Do you remember? Jesus just calmly walked through the crowd. Amen. Uh, Jesus never fell into fear or, or in intimidation. You see, he's, he's prostrated before Father, but he's standing strong in the face of all opposition. Uh, and listen to this. It says to you and me in Romans 8, 18, that God, God is a daddy, and he gave us spirit of sonship and adoption so that we would not return to fear. Amen. Hebrews, I think it's on a PowerPoint. Hebrews 13, verse 5b to 6 says, God himself has said, you, I, 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 I almost encourage you, close your eyes and see this, what I'm reading. God himself has said, I will, this is, this is Father God speaking over you. I will not fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support, nor abandon you. I will not, I will not, I will not. So we take comfort and are encouraged to boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread. Or be terrified. What can man do to me? Amen. He says to us in John 17. I have. He says. That we are loved. In, in John 15 he says. I have loved you just as the father has loved me. In John 17. 23 he says. I pray that they will know. That, they are, that you love them. As much as you love me. Okay. So. It, it's it's his his loving promises. He says in Luke 12, 32, do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If you're afraid about your provision of finances, just meditate on this. Luke 12, 32. It's father's good pleasure. Good, it pleases the father to give you the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if he didn't spare his own son, how much more he wouldn't give all things freely together with him. Hallelujah. So I just, I just want to pray for you and I want to minister to you. I would love you to, I would love you to focus right now on the fact that you're loved so much that Father God, the first time the word love is mentioned in, in, in the Bible is when God said to Abraham, your son, take your son, your only, your beloved son. The first time in the New Testament, love is mentioned, is when the Father God was affirming his love over his son, Jesus. Amen. And, and Jesus says that the Father loves you just as much as he loved Jesus. Isn't that amazing? God is for you. God is for you. Who can be against you? He, you are loved. You are precious. You, you cost too much to him. That's why we sang that song. Uh, oh, no, you will never let me. You, you won't let me go. Why? Because you cost to him too much. Amen. So close your eyes and, and just say to that fear, whatever is the fear. Maybe it's fear of danger. Maybe it's fear of sickness. Maybe it's fear of luck. Maybe it's fear of loneliness. Maybe it's fear of spiders. Who knows? Uh, just say to that fear, no. Fear be gone. Resist. Because God does not give you spirit of fear. Amen. It's, it's a spirit of fear. Resist that spirit of fear. You say no. Fear be gone. Hallelujah. I resist you. You have no place in my heart. Fear you have no place in my mind. Fear, you have no place in my imagination. And every time when you experience fear, guys, you resist it. You say no. And you also instantly know that if you feel in fear, you're listening to the wrong side. You're listening to the wrong words. So just run back into the embrace of the Father. Amen. And focus on his love. So, Father, we just thank you. Forgive us for often trusting the voice of somebody who hates us. The voice of like Shimaiah here was paid to intimidate him. Uh, Lord, there are people who are paid almost to intimidate us. 
uh, and father we we are right now we come against that spirit of fear first we we'll come against spirit of fear in our in our spiritual family right now in the mighty name of jesus i command that fear i break the hold of fear i break the imagination of fear and every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against true knowledge of god in your mind in your imagination i pull that down every voice that discredits the goodness of god in you every voice that discredits the love of god for you and commitment in his in his covenant to you in his covenant he promised to you that he will provide in his covenant he promised that he will supply that he that no that surely he will deliver you from the deadly pestilence amen he promised that he will give angels charge over you to accompany and protect you in all your ways hallelujah every voice that trying to discredit the true knowledge of god the truth of the lord are pulled it down and we destroy it in the mighty name of jesus and we take every thought captive to obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear you have no place in us. And Father, we invite the voice of your spirit and the strong voice of your, of your heart in us. Assurance of your love. Assurance that you are a shepherd. Assurance that we will be fed and provided and supplied and protected. Hallelujah. That you've got your staff with you and you've got your and you've got your rod with you. A staff for guiding us and rod for protection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you don't change. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you that you build your church. Thank you that you feed your family. Hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you that you are not unfaithful. Like you said, those who don't provide for their families, they rejected their faith. And worse than unbelievers, you are a daddy who is a daddy in the family. Hallelujah. You are a provider. You are a healer. You are a supplier. We tr I trust you. I trust you. And I say what you say. I confess what you confess, that I am strong, that I am provided for, that I am protected. Just confess it. Hallelujah. Take his word boldly in your mouth and confess it. Hallelujah. I am loved. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just if you need, just shout wherever you are. Just shout. I am loved. I am blessed. I am protected. I am prov I've got daddy. Hallelujah. Heavenly daddy in heaven watches over me every step of my way. He is with me. He never leaves me or forsakes me. He is for me. Who can be against me? I confidently say what a man can do to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. May you be strong. May you be confident. May you shine with the love and confidence of Jesus. May you shine with hope. Hallelujah. May you shine with Jesus wherever you go. May you bring hope and goodness. Hallelujah. Know that you are protected. Know that our Christ Church family, our St. Paul's family is free from COVID. Amen. Is free from evil in Jesus' mighty name.